augmented reality, a technology that still feels incredibly far away for us consumers. We have heard about all those impressive visions of the AI future, but the current state of the technology is usually extremely sobering and you ask yourself, do we really need that? Lately though, there's been a lot going on in the market. The impacts are getting closer even for us consumers. The $300 MetaQuest shows us what's possible with mixed reality and pass-through AR. And later this year, its successor project Cambria is coming to market, even focusing its main attention on improved AR functionality. In this video, I show you what kind of AR glasses we can expect to see soon thanks to Qualcomm's new AR reference design and how much better these devices will be compared to the previous generation. I will show you how Niantic, the developer of Pokemon Go, is already implementing our AR future in some locations around the world now and why we can pretty sure at Apple's infamous XR glasses are most probably coming to the market soon. So stay tuned because this video will really be interesting. So let's get into it. Before we go into detail about Qualcomm's reference design, let's briefly take a look at the Quest 2's experimental room setup together. Every VR user knows that you need space in the real world for a session in virtual reality. At the same time, the space should generally be free of obstructions. Meta hired developer Bob Bergbile, who previously created a free tool with similar features. Ian Hamilton from Upload VR has already been able to check out this feature. As you can see, the room measurement is more detailed and extensive. He describes that he was able to create a box around his kitchen table super fast with this function and that it could be displayed as an obstacle in VR. What's interesting though is the ability to combine the virtual and real worlds. Mixed reality is the keyword here. In this context the idea of what we can expect from Project Cambria also becomes clearer. I imagine cool furniture and interior design apps anyway. So maybe I can transfer my folding chair into a state-of-the-art designer chair. Nice to look at, but the back problems will probably remain. If you're still wondering what exactly you're supposed to do with AR glasses, Niantic might have something for you. The company has activated its VPS system in some cities this week. These include San Francisco, London, Tokyo, Los Angeles, New York and Seattle. To give you an idea of that, for example, you can leave virtual objects for other people which can then be collected. So far, you don't need AR glasses for this, just a smartphone. With nearly 30,000 VPS location points, developers can design 10x10 meter AR experiences. The creative boundaries of the apps are quite expansive and can include anything. Yantic expects to have VPS points in over 100 cities by the end of the year. In my opinion, the presented idea of Niantic is very interesting. However, the question is, will these points really be used in the future the way Niantic wants them to be? It will take a while until the concept is built according to Niantic's vision. Now we come to the already mentioned reference design from Qualcomm. By the way, a reference design is a design specification of the hardware manufacturer, in this case Qualcomm. When another company uses Qualcomm's hardware but uses its own design, it's called a custom design. The reference design always provides a basic template for manufacturers. Using this template, quite a lot can be derived for future AR glasses. By the way, the new XR2 chip is the base for the reference design and is supposed to enable a wireless AR experience via smartphone. Qualcomm's previous concept was based on the Snapdragon XR1 chip and provided for a wired connection between a smartphone and the AR glasses. The main processing power will still take place on your smartphone, but it will be wireless and have support for Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. The latency is supposed to be less than 3 milliseconds. 
This is obviously very important for AR applications to ensure a smooth and pleasant experience. Qualcomm also emphasizes that the glasses can not only be paired with a smartphone but also with a Windows PC. What we can expect in terms of numbers. The trend towards thinner and thinner designs on smartphones has subsided, but it's needed urgently for AR and VR glasses. Qualcomm says the new design will be 30% thinner than the previously design and will be operate at 1920 per 1080 resolution per eye at 90Hz. Furthermore, the device has two monochrome cameras for 6 degrees of freedom tracking and one RGB camera for video or photo recording built in. The diagonal field of view will probably be 45 degrees, as was the case with the predecessor. The micro displays will have a no motion blur feature. In concrete terms, this means less blurring of the image when the head is moved. The whole thing is achieved by a lower afterglow time. For a recent snapshot, my thoughts are that Qualcomm has made some impressive strides here. One thing I particularly like is that the glasses are getting slimmer and work wirelessly. In any case, we can look forward to new AR glasses when Qualcomm goes into mass production with cooperating companies. The company that is likely to go into mass production in the near future is Apple. According to a report from Bloomberg, the mixed reality headset has been shown to the management board of the company. Through him, we always get a few morsels of information about the XR headset. This ranges from possible designs for the company's own operating system, Reality OS. The headset will most likely be Apple's next big one more thing and will be the first new hardware product since the Apple Watch. The company mainly earns its money with hardware and wants to expand this sector. In 2011, the Siri voice assistant was demonstrated to Apple's board of directors a few weeks before its public unveiling. So does that mean we will get the headset unveiled at WWDC on June 6th? If Mark Gurman has his way, then probably not. In another article, he reported that Apple is still dealing with overheating and supply issues. And the headset is more likely to be unveiled at the end of the year. What's smart, though, is Apple has been offering AR apps to developers on the iPad and iPhone for years. So we will most likely not get an empty store, but will already be able to try out numerous apps of the release of the headset. The WWDC is mainly aimed at developers. We should therefore not hope for the next one more thing in the form of the headset on June 6th, but read between the lines. Perhaps Apple will announce other interesting things that go well with AR and VR. In any case, should Apple go public with a headset in the next few months, one thing is certain. AR and VR would be more present in the general public again. Developers and consumers will once again have a new platform to choose from on the market. And that's a good thing, isn't it? If you are interested in details about this headset, then you can click on this video here. All details about the Apple Mixed Reality headset are gathered there. What do you think of the development in terms of AR headsets? Feel free to write your opinion about it in the comments below. That's it for this week. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. William out.